Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and I wanted to do a couple of updates today. The first one is for the experimental toad that I did. I made this out of the brand new recipe for paper cement clay. And I just wanted to let you know how well he's doing outside. And the other update is for the dragon that I got started, a, a dragon pattern. Uh, it's going to be a wall sculpture like one of these guys behind me. Now first let's talk about the toad. He has been outside in the rain for two weeks and it is still solid as a rock. There has been no damage so far at all. Now does that mean it's going to last all winter? We don't know because he's only two weeks old. <laughs> This experimental toad is actually uh, two experiments at the same time. The paper cement clay and the spray that I used to seal it. That combination is what we're, we're really testing. I don't know if this would have survived all that rain um, with a different sealer. I, I just, I don't know. We're doing a very non-scientific uh, experiment here. But so far it's working really well and I, I'm really hoping that it lasts a whole lot longer because he's sitting right outside my garage door and he kind of looks up at me every time I walk outside. He's just got this big smile and it makes me happy every time I see him. So I'm hoping that he does survive it. I do want to emphasize that it is an experiment. Um, the recipe link is right down below. If you'd like to experiment too, feel free to do that. But try to make something small that you're not going to fall in love with quite as much as I kind of have with this guy because it might not work over time. We just simply don't know yet. We've got to give it at least a year outside to see if this is really a good way to make outdoor sculptures. Okay, I want, I want to make sure that everybody understands that part. While this guy has been doing our experiment outside, I've been working really hard inside working on our dragon. I let you guys vote on what you wanted me to make my next pattern for. And I gave you the options of a rhino or a dragon. Dragon won totally. I mean, there, there were just a few people who said rhino. I am going to still make one though because I really want one. But dragon's going to come first and I've been working really hard for the last couple of weeks to get all the pattern pieces uh, drawn out and make everything fit. So that's what he looks like now. No paper mache yet, no paint yet, no instructions. So it's going to be at probably three more weeks before I can actually put the, the pattern out on my website so that you can try it out yourself. But I wanted to let you see uh, what it looks like now. I'm really, I'm really happy with his, the, the fact that his neck is curved and he kind of looks at you a little bit sideways um, when you uh, see him on the wall. Now I'm going to go grab him now. One of the reasons that I <laughs> gave him a curved neck like that was because I, I borrowed a bunch of different animals as models for this guy. Every dragon is made up of different animals. And one of them that I chose was a bird. It's a, called a, a great eared night jar. Um, it, if you look up birds that look like dragons, that bird is on almost every list. It's, and I had never heard of it before, but I went out and checked it out and it is pretty cool because it's got this, this um, wrap around ear thing. I really like that design feature, but it does make it really difficult to see his whole face from the front. <laughs> but I liked it so much I didn't want to give it up. So um, I just gave him a really curved long neck so that when it's hanging on the wall, he'll be looking at you slightly sideways in a somewhat menacing way. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not used to making open mouth toothy animals and so he's making me just a little bit nervous actually. The, the teeth came from a dinosaur that's called um, a shark-toothed dragon. It was found in China and that is what they call it. That's a lot of teeth. <laughs> I got the, the nostrils came from a monitor lizard. Um, this eye um, decoration comes from a red-eyed skink. And the horns were going to be from a tri triceratops, but the only thing, I, I, I just kept twisting them, um, changing the shape, shortening them up. Um, the only thing left triceratops-like is the fact that there's three of them. But I'm still going to give him credit for it anyway, because it was his idea. 
<laughs> now there's a lot of other things that could go on a dragon beards um, I might put a ruff around his uh, cheeks um, I think I'm going to put some pointy scales down the back because most dragons do have points. And it was kind of fun doing the research for this fellow. Every culture over thousands of years have come up with the idea of a dragon and they're all different, but they're all recognizably dragons. And so I wanted to know, you know, why is that? My theory, um, and a lot of people seem to agree with this, is that over these thousands of years, people have found dinosaur bones. And just like modern scientists, they draw what they thought those bones would have looked like if the animal was still alive. Now there's another theory that seems to be a little bit better accepted in the academic circles, and that is that um, dragons are actually a manifestation of our inner fears, and they couldn't have been modeled after actual dinosaurs because the ancient people didn't have the right kind of tools to dig up dinosaur bones. But if you believe that, do a real fast search on Google for Boy Finds Dinosaur. Since people can actually find dinosaur bones just sitting out on the ground, sometimes, I'm, I'm not really convinced about that particular part of the theory. But the rest of the theory is that almost every culture on Earth decided that they had to think up what a creature would look like if it embodied every one of our most basic fears. When we were really small monkeys still in, hanging out in the trees, the animals that would have scared us the most are snakes, big cats, and raptors or, or owls. Uh, some kind of bird that comes down and, and grabs you. And that's why we always find hints of those animals in dragons in every culture. It doesn't explain the horns that you almost always see on dragons. I mean, it's kind of an interesting theory, but I'm, I'm not going for it. Now, obviously, I, <laughs> I'm a little opinionated about where dragons came from and why there are dragons everywhere. But what do you think? I, I would be really interested in your opinion on that. Do you, do you think that it's really uh, something that's held over from our, our, our very, very long past? Or, or do you think that they were just based on dinosaur bones? What do you think? I'd really like to know. Is it, we'll, we'll, let's, let's start a little argument down there. <laughs> Obviously, people have very strong opinions about it. It'd be interesting to see. Now, what comes next with this fellow, obviously, is that it does need paper mache. It needs to be painted. I have no idea how I'm going to do that. This is going to be a total surprise to me, what he looks like when he's done. And then I have to do a bunch of videos showing you how to make them. I have to... Um, I have to write all the instructions, so we're at least three weeks out. But I did want to let you know that I am working on him. <laughs> he is coming. I do have to take a break now, though. That's another reason why this is going to take a little bit of time, because there, there's some things in the garden that I really have to do. Now, I also want to uh, thank everybody who answered the gardening question that I put at the very, very end of my last video. And I, I got a lot of feedback from people who said they aren't planting gardens this year in spite of all the news about potential food shortages because they don't, well, maybe they tried gardening before and it just really didn't work. Or they just have never tried it and they just really don't know how. Now, I wanted to let you guys know that even though I really did make my garden a lot bigger this year, I really don't know what I'm doing. It's kind of like when I when I paint something. I don't know how to paint this dragon. I really don't. I'm going to do it anyway, though. And... It's, it's going to be okay. And that's pretty much the way I feel about my garden. I, I uh, look at a whole lot of YouTube videos. I do something different every single year to see if it works. Next year, I probably forget what I did last year and I do something else. <laughs> now, the really big winner this year on my experiments was my potatoes. I planted them under landscape cloth, but before I put that cloth down there, I used a tip from the MI Gardener YouTube channel. It was a lot of work. But at the beginning of this summer, it got really, really hot and it didn't rain for a really long time. I didn't water these potatoes at all. And yes, there really are potatoes under there. I just checked a couple of days ago. They're, they're not ready to harvest yet, but I, I just had to peek and see. Now, on the other hand, I just uh, did recently plant out some little kale starts and somebody ate them. I 
planted some carrot seeds that haven't come up and I'm kind of thinking they won't because I sort of forgot to water them. And I really hate picking beans. I do it, but the, I usually wait until they get too big, which is totally my fault, but I just, I really don't like doing it. But when I went out to check on my potatoes yesterday, I saw a, a tiny little toad that wasn't much bigger than a grasshopper. And right after I saw that toad, I also saw a slithering snake, just a little skinny one. He was just so pretty. And in spite of what I'm supposed to have in my brain, that that very ancient fear held over from my tree-dwelling primate ancestors, that snake wasn't in the least bit scary. So I'm still holding on to the dinosaur theory. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure that you do if you're interested in making one of these dragons. I uh, don't have the pattern done yet, but as soon as it is finished, I will put it up on my website so that you can download it uh, and, and make your own dragon. There will be a small charge for it. Like I said, it's probably going to take uh, at least two weeks, probably probably three or four before all of the instructions and, and everything gets done. Or you might want to just look in the description down below because if you're watching this later and the dragon's already done, I'll put a link to it so that you can go to my website and download it. Now you might also want to subscribe if you are interested in finding out if the paper cement clay toad survives the winter. It's going to be a while before that video comes out. It's a long time before winter is over here in Minnesota. So you might forget, so go ahead and subscribe so that you'll be reminded of that. By the way, that reminds me, do you know that we've got over 200,000 subscribers to this channel now? That, <laughs> that is so surprising to me because back, I think it was 11 or 12 years ago when I first started my blog and my channel, I thought maybe there'd be 10 adults in the world who would also be interested in playing around with paper mache. <laughs> I'm just, I am so... Uh, amazed that so many people are really excited about it and I really appreciate all of the support that I've been given by you over the years. It has just been so much fun. If I hadn't started the blog and the channel just to, to, to learn out loud basically, um, I probably would have made a couple of sculptures and then just kind of wandered off to do something else because that's what I usually do. It's also been really fun being able to see so many of your sculptures. Um, if you have some sculptures that you'd like to show off, be sure and do that on the Daily Sculptors page at ultimatepapermache.com. There's a link to it at the top of the blog, so it's really easy to find. Now be sure to watch for the new updates on the dragon and the toad. If you have any ideas about dragons that you'd like to share with me before this guy gets done, be sure and put that down below in the comments. And now go make something and come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.